Hey people, Zar Thwomp here, and welcome to episode 49 of Hollow Knight Blind. Last time, we proceeded to start with our quest to get the level 3 flames for Grimm and his ritual, only to get our asses handed to us by one of the level 3 flame bows, which were surprisingly bulky. But anyways, after defeating that flame bow, we then went back to the Ancestral Basin, where we fought the Lost Kin, the Dreamfight variant of the Broken Vessel, which netted us enough essence in order to cause the Seer to ascend to a higher plane of existence, though not before uttering something about a lost god. So anyways, in today's episode, we are going to be continuing with our quest in order to get the remaining two flames that we need. But before that, I want to really apologize for just the current circumstances behind me doing this, com me doing this commentary post-recording. Just, when I was doing this recording session, I thought that the mic was unmuted. I thought that we were all good, I looked at the mic, I didn't see the mute button flashing, so I'm thinking, okay, everything is hunky-dory. Though, come to find out, when I was doing some configurations on OBS for another project, I had accidentally muted the mic for the scene that I used for this recording, for this game. So, basically, I went in with to this episode, as well as the next two, with not knowing that the mic was muted, doing commentary, just having a jolly good time, none the wiser to the fact that just it wasn't even being recorded. So yeah, anyways, at least from here, you can actually get to know my post-commentary thoughts, basically just some behind-the-scenes sort of stuff. But anyways, at this point in the episode, I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, okay, we're going to definitely want to try to go for that flame. Because it, because basically, chances are it's in the same area as those two grubs, which would be really interesting if we could actually get two more grubs before the bonus episode, where I'm basically going to be showing off, okay, where are all the grubs located in the game? At least all the remaining grubs. So, basically, I was thinking about how we should handle this. So... Starting things off, I was thinking, okay, we're going to head over to the to Kingdom's Edge and get that flame. But then I was looking at the map, and I was no, and I was thinking to myself that it would probably be best if we actually went over to Deep Nest in order to get the flame there first, because not only is it right by the stag station, so making it where it would be easy to find, but considering how Deep Nest has screwed me over so badly in the past just with all the twists and turns that it has to offer, I was thinking that, okay, nothing in Deep Nest can take me by surprise anymore. I mean, we dealt with Nosk, we dealt with Galleon. If we have to fight another ghost there, it's if we have to fight a ghost there, it's going to be pretty much nothing. It's just going to be a drop in the ocean, more or less. So I was thinking that we might as well get an easy flame that I'm pretty sure that I know the location of and that we have pretty quick access to, rather than basically trying to find a flame that may or may not be easily accessible, that we may not have the location for. So basically, going here, I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to do a one last search around this room to make sure that there isn't a bench that I'm missing out on, because knowing my luck, I would have somehow, knowing how I am, I would have somehow missed a bench in this location. So anyways... I decided that while we're here, I'm going to make it a little easier on myself by saving here, just in the event that I get defeated, because if that last po flame pole that we encountered was of any indication, these level 3 ones can be pretty nasty, with, well, with how bulky they are, and not to mention that they take off a whopping 2 units of health. Just, that is insane, that basically just, this common enemy that you're thinking, okay, it's not going to be too bad, it takes off 2 units of health. The only other common enemy I know of that really does that are the spiders that lurk in this area. And even then, they are very situational and very regional enemies. So, just, they're very much the exception to the rule. So anyways, I was looking around this area wondering where the heck that flame pole is. Because it was saying that it was right in this section of the village, but yet it wasn't present. So, I go into the house thinking that, okay, maybe this flame pole is in the house and it's just a little off. Like that one grub that was being shown on the map in the in the city of tears so anyways i'm not going to be reading the dialogue for this because just it would require me to actually just stop what i'm doing and then just start reading this dot start reading basically this character's lines even though he's more or less just saying oh hey you know maybe this ritual isn't such a good idea maybe it would be best if we actually stopped it 
And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe that is the way we're supposed to go. Maybe you're supposed to find this guy before it's too late and then stop the ritual to get an even better reward. Because that's how it typically is in games where you're, where you're dealing with a ritual. Where basically it's like, is the ritual a good idea to do? And then when you stop the ritual, you tend to get a very good reward. Your hail is a good guy. I mean, with how this game is, just it can go either way. Just This game is one of those games where just... It can be very gray in how you handle things. Heck, this game has absolutely no linear story, so of course you're not. So of course the side quests aren't going to be linear either. So, anyways, I'm thinking to myself, it would be at least worthwhile to check out what this guy is saying in that going to the hollow, the Howling Cliffs, and basically seeing if we could put an end to the ritual. Because I'm thinking to myself. Chances are, Grim is going to be the kind of guy where he will try to kill us again for the sake of his precious ritual. I mean, when we got the level 2 flames for him, he was just giving us... Ab he basically... The only thing we got rewarded with was pain, as well as a badge notch. Sorry, excuse me. As well as a badge notch. So, while that badge notch was pretty good, I'm thinking to myself, maybe we'll get something even better if we stop the ritual. You know, like, maybe we free Grim. We free him from the evils possessing him. He's like, oh, thank you. Thank you for freeing me from these evils. Allow for me to bestow upon you unlimited wealth and power. So, yeah, I thought that would be at least a good idea to give this a look. I mean, for all I knew, Broom could have easily betrayed us. He could have been the kind of guy where he's like, I want to do good in the world. Now all of a sudden, boom, 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 working our asses hand to us. Heck, look at the dreamers. We had to contend with so much pain getting to them. I mean, with the with the dreamer in the city of tears, you had to fight his army of watcher knights, and then just with Hera, just you had to go through deep nest in general. Just that place is not nice. Where so basically from there, it can be implied that nothing in this game is good. The only thing that's good in this game is Papa Mato. Papa Mato giving you sword techniques for free and basically turn, making you his child. You are Papa Mato's child. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if someone betrays you in this game. Papa Mato, he comes to your rescue. Papa Mato, you will not hurt my child. Get away from my baby boy, baby. And then just Mato just swipes whatever's threatening you with his big sword. And he just cuddles Limbu. It's okay, baby boy, baby. It's okay. The mean man won't hurt you anymore. And then Mato just kisses Limbu's forehead. I love you. I love you, my baby boy, baby. So anyways, you get to see me doing my classic fumbling around. My, my, fa my famous fumbling around, basically the infamous aimless wandering of Zarthwamp, where basically I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's there's no harm in exploring this area once again, because I'm seeing this empty path that's just screaming, I, contain, I may contain something good. So I decide, hey, you know what, we're here, so we might as well check it out. Of course, just I get naturally knocked into the spikes, because why not? Uh, dealing with this level one enemy that we could just sneeze away just causes me troubles. So basically, what's new in that regard? So anyways, I'm going over here. I'm thinking, oh, this would be a great area to hide a secret. Nope, no secret. Chances are I probably encountered this the first time we were here, but I had forgotten because I have the short-term memory of a goldfish. And with and basically, when it comes to remembering something, I only really remember something if it truly stands out to me, whether it's good or it's bad. Though more particular, though particularly if it's bad, as if my mind is telling me, Zarthwamp, you don't want to deal with this. This is in your best interest to not deal with this thing. Remember the pain that it caused you. Basically, just learning from experience. That's how we grow as people. We basically. We experience something bad, or we experience something good, and then we grow from there. Typically, just challenge Forge's character, as they say, and that's what they mean by it. So, basically, checking my map here to see if we're going in the right direction, because with how, my, how bad my sense of direction is, I'm like Leon from Pokemon, in that if I don't have that map open at all times, chances are I'm going to get lost. Especially if I'm in an area like this, where just everything looks the same. So yeah, I was making sure that I wasn't missing anything. So yeah, heading on down to the, heading on down to basically the ritual room that we found in that secret passageway, and and sure enough, you find Broom here. So I wanted to make sure that we weren't walking into an ambush. So I read Broom's mind, and upon hearing his thoughts being genuine, 
I was more inclined to listen to him because I'm thinking, okay, this guy is actually one of the few honest people in this entire game. He's one of the few decent people who isn't out to bait, who isn't out to kill me, basically. Just, it's a breath of fresh air when you encounter people like that in, in a game like this. Just, it's like, okay, it makes the encounter all the nicer. So anyways, we're, so anyways, Broom, he starts to break open the flame. And so, thinking that this is a cutscene, I'm just standing around like a dolt, just watching it. They go, okay, what's it gonna end? And then, just lo and behold, you actually have to take a part in it. So, yeah, once you destroy the flame, it goes away. And as you'd expect, this actually will end the side quest off, basically. It will take away your Grim Child, it will take away your flame requirements. Basically, you get the Banishment achievement, you essentially end, you get a resolution to this side quest, whether you want it or not. Now, after doing some research on the matter, bec because I was curious in regards to basically if this was a good thing or not, I actually discovered that I am missing out on a boss fight, basically. I, if I would have kept, if I would have just ignored Broom and I would have continued on with the ritual, I would, after collecting the third flame, I would have been, I would have been, for, I would have been tasked with fighting a being known as Nightmare Grim, essentially going into Grim's dreams and doing his dream fight, which is essentially like his normal fight, but much harder. Basically, he moves faster, his attacks have a wider range to them, and just overall, it is a more intense experience. But if you win it, you do get a strong, you basically get a stronger Grim Child. Though you also get a charm for getting this ending as well, and you don't have to fight a hard as nails boss fight. So basically, it all depends on what you're looking for. Though I may have actually screwed myself out of the bestiary completion, be uh, completing the bestiary, because if I can't fight Nightmare Grim, then basically, well, I can't fight Nightmare Grim, and I can't complete, I can't get all of the enemies. Though after completing the game, I did look in. I did start doing some research on what constitutes completion, what doesn't constitute completion, and from what I found out, basically, you don't act. You actually don't get anything for completing the bestiary. It's purely for the sake of achievements, just bragging rights. Something that you basically do. It's like, oh hey, I'm the ultimate hunter. I've hunted down all of these creatures, and earning the respect of that one beast inside Green Path. So yeah, basically, if you want the full experience with the Grim side quest, I would say definitely don't follow Broom's Broom's request and complete and banish the and fail the ritual. Keep the ritual up if you want the full experience, because apparently nothing bad happens besides well all of the psychological torture of having to fight Nightmare Grim, and not to mention another bad aspect of basically banishing the Grim Troop is that basically, remember Desiree or Desire, whatever her name is, basically that bug that eats your fragile charms and if you pay her a large sum of money, she gives you unbreakable charms? Well, basically she disappears too. And while she'll leave behind any charms that basically you had her processing at the time, you will not be able to turn them into the unbreakable variety, which definitely makes me feel glad that I just went in full guns of blaze on the strength charm because I was thinking to myself, okay, if she wants the if she wants the if she wants the fragile charms, then I would rather experiment with the strength charm, one that I would want to see upgraded or one that basically I would want to see boosted in terms of strength. Just I would want to see that one messed with first because frankly. It was one that I wasn't playing on really equipping. So, unlike Greed, which I would, which I was kind of playing on equipping, because basically with Fragile Greed, you can at least get some good money out of it, from what I've heard. I mean, even though I really didn't get a chance to take advantage of it, given the fact that it broke really within five minutes of us getting it, back way back when, when we first got to the Fungal Plains. Uh, sorry, the, the Fungal Waste. Why can I not remember that? So anyways, Fun, fun fact about this portion. I actually forgot about my dream gate. I forgot that I could just have simply warped over to the dream gate and then gone off to dirt, gone back to dirt mount faster. But no, I was thinking of, my tunnel vision was so bad at this point that I was thinking, I gotta get to dirt mouth. I gotta get to dirt mouth. So basically, I'm just going full bore trying to get here. And sure enough, find the fragile heart just lying there. And then you talk to the elder bug. He's like, thank God that those elements are out. They were lowering property values, even though there was nothing here. 
Though really, it's kind of morbid how Elderbug is talking about how he likes it quiet. I mean, at the start of the game, he was talking about how just how inco how sad he was that basically bugs were going down into the into the forgotten crossroads one at a time, only to never return. That he was the only person here. I guess Elderbug just wants three people here at max. He just wants a town of less than ten people. That's how he likes it. He doesn't want the kids with their loud bebop music. So, anyways. When you banish the Grim troop, basically, Broom, he gets reincarnated as Nim, who basically will give you a charm that basically is ar with effects that are kind of arguable. Essentially, he is going to give us the calming melody charm, which basically, well, uh, let's see if it's actually the name that I think it is. I think it's the calming melody or soothing melody or something along those lines. So... Uh, are you going to give us the melody? I guess carefree melody, basically. This badge from this charm, from what I've seen, basically in the description, I haven't had a chance to look at the actual effects of it. But judging from the effect, judging from how it's labeled in its description, basically, I I can only gather that it once in a while will block out a hit, which could be useful in just really hard fights, but I frankly don't like relying on chance when it comes to those sort of things, especially with a charm slot of three, when I could simply just put on my mark of pride and could easily take advantage of just the increased range. I mean, why rely on just chance when I could actually rely on just when I can have a surefire bet? So anyways, we, so anyways, here I am just setting back my, and my default charm setup with having that boosted attack because I would rather have boosted attack than, say, a chance of blocking it out damage from a single hit because with that, because basically going off of that, just I can be sure of just how a battle can play out. And it's not just rolling the dice because I don't like doing that sort of thing when I'm in battle where I'm basically relying on 100% luck because that can be stressful and it can just bite you in the butt so many times. So anyways, with basically the flame quest all done, I decided that... Basically, we might as well spend the rest of the episode just exploring to see what that location, where those two grubs are located anyways, you know? Because it wasn't like I had much planned for the rest of the episode anyways. Heck, the only thing that really I had left on the agenda was going and defeating the last Dreamer, which I figured wouldn't take too long because the other Dreamers, once we figured out their locations, it wasn't too bad. It was more or less just, hey, you gotta fight a boss or you have to navigate just this location basically defeat the Watcher Knights or basically deal with that bug ambush. So anyways, I decided to give the, give basically Kingdom's Edge just one quick, quick gloss over it just to see if we could find a new location or we could find a set of hidden tunnels or something along those lines. Because just that, because it, just the fact that two grubs were hidden there and basically a flame was positioned there as well. It just really screamed suspicious to me. It just screamed that there were secrets that were that we had to find. So anyways, I decided to sit on that bench just in case something went horribly wrong because something always goes horribly wrong when you think to yourself, oh, hey, I'm not going to die here. That's basically a death flag in of itself. So anyways, notice on that wall just those slight vines slash cracks. I thought that those were just senior just vines from the scenery, basically, just to give this place some atmosphere. I mean, I wouldn't put it past the game to just throw in some random vines to make an area look more overgrown and basically just add atmosphere to the environment. Because, I mean, there are rooms in this game that are dedicated purely to the atmosphere. Heck, that one room that I basically was trying to basically use the upward B spell on in the hopes of it upgrading it. That area is entirely for atmosphere, basically. It's all just for the sake of speculation, adding some depth to the world. So, yeah. I would not put it past this game to just have it where... Just there's an empty... Where basically there's just some little overgrowth on the side of the area. And, yeah, it kind of does feel a little upsetting to just go... You ever have, a, have that feeling where you're doing a blind playthrough... And you, after completing the game, you look on the wiki to see what you're missing, basically. But, so, anyways, I had that just yesterday when I completed the game. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to look up, one of the first things I'm going to look up is where the upgrade version of the up B spell is. Basically, how to find that, because that was the only one that I couldn't find. And it would have been really nice to have an upgrade version of that spell during the final boss. So... Basically, I look it up, and turns out it was in the abyss. Though it was in that one room to the left of, on the left side, where basically it was a bunch of heads, you know. 
Yeah, I have to do the whale there, apparently, and you get the spell. So, yeah. So, yeah, basically, now that I know that, and now that I know about that, basically, just, it feels kind of sad that I somehow missed, that I missed out on it. But anyways, what I was doing here was I was just searching around to see if there was a hidden entrance that we were, in fact, missing out on, because, basically, because with an area like that, just, I was thinking, okay, where is it? Where can we find a way to get those grubs? And sure enough, we found, I found one right there, just searching above the ground. And that's how I, and that's how we found, how I stumbled upon basically the hive, the final area in the game. This area actually doesn't have a map of its own because it's technically linked to Kingdom's Edge, even though it is classified as a new, a new area in of itself, where it, get, it gets the whole, oh hey, here's a new area screen, basically. It's called the hive. So anyways, there's our grub buddy over there, just cracking his glass open. So that way he can go back home. So anyways, so from there, I was thinking to myself, okay, if we can, if there was in fact a secret area into this hive, then where is the other one? So I'm looking over to the right and I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is where we're gonna have to access it from here. We're gonna have to go to the right side of the screen. So naturally, uh, so naturally, my first thought was that there was another floor panel that based another hidden flo another breakable floor that I had missed out on. Heck, I missed out on this one. So who's to say that I wasn't missing out on another one? So I'm, first off, I was checking to, here to make sure that there wasn't another hidden that there wasn't another hidden passageway, just because this game has a has a tendency of having where they hide hidden passages behind hidden passageways. Just. They really want you to earn your rewards. They want you to earn the feeling of finding a hidden location. So naturally, just going around, searching in the Ashlands of what's going on, just dealing with those jumping ticks right there. Yeah, really, the max upgrade needle just, it is a godsend. Just being able to slash those guys down like it's no one's business. Though, speaking of which, it's going to be fun going back to the back to the Coliseum and attempting the the, the the Fool's Challenge, basically, after defeating the final boss. Because if I can defeat the final boss, I think I can handle the Fool's Challenge gauntlet. Especially considering that we now have unbreakable strength at our disposal. Being able to utilize that in conjunction with just... with our other charms. Heck, I... So anyway, sorry about that. Sorry I'm getting a little flustered right here. It's kind of weird just post-commentating, just watching my footage and then just commentating right over it rather than just trying to double task between doing commentary and actually doing gameplay. Because basically when you're doing gameplay, just it, just for me at the very least, I always get tongue-tied when, I get tongue-tied naturally when I'm trying to talk because my brain's moving about five miles a Five, I'm trying. It's moving. It's doing a five-minute sp mile sprint, just to base where ideas are coming to my head, just non-stop, just rapid fire, and my but yeah, my tongue can't keep up with it. And the thing is, is that by default, I'm a naturally slow speaker, but yet I like speaking fast. So basic, because when I get excited, I tend to just go rapid fire, and I'm very passionate about basically these recordings. So naturally, I have all the speed of a speedboat. But yet all of the, but yet all of the articulation of a rock. So anyways, so anyways, not finding the other entrance to the hive, I basically went back down and I was thinking to myself, okay, that area where we saw that, what I thought was moss, basically. I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's something more of that. And I'm thinking that here I could just go down, I could use the dive move to just go all the way down. Just do something like Guacamole where you frog slam and you just go down a long corridor downwards, just taking advantage of all that. So anyways, just wanted to grab some soul just to be sure that we weren't missing out on any, so that way I was actually prepared. And good thing we did because I needed to heal after falling into those spikes in a typical Zarthwamp move. And I decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna try it, try seeing if there's a secret passage there. And when I was doing this, I realized that I wasn't slashing in the right direction. And when I actually jumped that, I'm like, there we go. That's the secret entrance. And then basically, then it, then I started to notice, okay, those are cracks, not moss. The game deceived me. I felt, I basically had been skipping over this area ever since we got here back in episode 31. 
Episode 31, episode 32, that sort of time range. I think we got her in episode 32. Actually, basically, I know that we fought Hornet here in episode 32. So anyways, here's the high, which is a person like, which I find to be a pretty cool area because basically unlike the hive in Bug Fables, which is basically this technological, this technological marvel, basically the hive here is very much more bee-like. It's just, it has a more fantasy vibe to it, which does have a unique feel to it, especially since bees in video games tend to be more societal than most other insects where basically they actually have a, they have a military, they have just society in general. Just an overall civilization. So I was really excited to see what was going on with the bees. Because I was thinking that the bees were actually going to be very much like the mantises. And that basically we would have to fight one of the rulers, get their respect, something like that. Though, unlike the mantises where they were a legit challenge for that part of the game. Here we are coming in with pretty much an end game set. So naturally, we're able to just defeat all the basic bee minions. And just... Wanting to see what else was here, I decided, hey, before we go right, I'm going to check out what the side room is. And good thing we do, because right in this room, or rather in the next room over, yeah, we first have to deal with that enemy. That enemy right there is arguably the worst enemy in the hive, because those guys just seek you out. But anyways, for easy bench, just crack it down, you're all good. Frankly, when I was doing this during the, during the actual episode, I was actually nervous that we were going to have to fight a mini boss like some honey guardian. So, looking at my map, I was thinking, okay, maybe we could complete the hive in this episode, but then I was starting to get second thoughts. And so, we're going to head back to the bench and end the episode off. Anyways, I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back for the next one. If you like the video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. With that, see you next time. Bye.